my OSI model troubleshooting, it's always physical layer. Um, so I wasn't planning on giving an intro, but uh, I'm going to do that. It's an honor uh, to intro my friend John DiMaggio uh, with Analyst One. Most of you probably are here because you've read some of the work he has done, uh, either his book, The Art of Cyber Warfare, or uh, the Ransomware Diary series that's pretty popular that sort of culminated in this talk. This is his first DEF CON talk. It's way overdue. Uh, he's one of the top cyber espionage practitioners on the planet. And with that, I'll turn over to John. You go Thanks, ahead. Man. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Where there's a will, there's a way. I'm glad we got this started. Let me get this mic adjusted. All right. Everybody hear me? All right. Well, he already said my name. Yep, I'm an author. That's all great. Uh, I'm not here to talk to you about that today. Uh, I do write the ransomware diaries. That is not what this is about, but the output of what I'm going to talk to you about today is there. But this is this is a story, okay? I am a storyteller, and this is like a once-in-a-lifetime story, and I'm just so excited to be able to be up here and tell you this story today. Um, this this is a ransomware story, but it's also a story of friendship. It's a it's a story of love. It's a story of betrayal, and it's a story of deceit. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I started to create the content for this, um, I found that there was a particular similarity between my relationship with Lockbit the man behind Lockbit, uh, and the horrific uh, dating love story shows that my girlfriend tortures me with. So I'm going to share some of that and add that element into this today. So anyway, on that note, let's kick this shit off. So when I began this, uh, you know, I knew that, that if I was going to get Lockbit to like me, uh, I was going to have to talk to him as someone besides myself. Lockbit was sort of the prom queen. Everybody, you know, talking about wanted wanted Lockbit to like them, and he was sort of the the top dog. Uh, this was two years ago, though, so it wasn't the number one ransomware group at the time. But he was moving up. I knew he wasn't going to talk to me as me, so I put on a puppet show. I spent a lot of time developing sock puppets. Um, I cultivated these these puppets, but it, it's still at the same time I could only use them um, if they were believable and if other people around him believed it. So the first thing that I had to do was I needed to hang out at his spots. And what I mean, his favorite spots. What I mean by this, though, is is the places online where he would go to recruit, the places online where he would go to socialize, the places where he'd go to talk with other criminals and other hackers. Okay, this isn't his infrastructure. These are the places where he spends his time. So once I found those, I needed to find his accounts. That was pretty easy. This dude calls himself Lockbit or variations of Lockbit in all of his accounts, so it didn't take too much work. And once I sort of profiled that and gotten into these various forums that he was on, I stalked his business partners. Now, what I mean by that is I looked at the people he was buying attack resources from, but I also looked at the conversations that he was having. I was looking at the affiliates he was talking to. But, but this dude talked to a lot of people. He is an extreme extrovert when it comes to these forums. And there was a lot of conversations. So I needed to figure out who was relevant. I needed to find those high value targets. So I started to look for the people that he talked to the most. And I started to look for affiliates that had relationships with not just him, but with other ransomware groups. And, and sort of vetted that list. Once I had that list and I knew who they were, uh, that allowed me to spy on them. Um, so I, I spent a lot of time going through these forums. And I mean, I stalked the shit out of these dudes. I read everything they ever wrote. Now, taking that information, um, what, what I had to do was sort of overlay that going backwards in time to see where what attacks were taking place in the world and what significant events were happening. But that wasn't the important thing. The important thing was the conversations that had nothing to do with that. Think about it. If you want to date somebody, you want to know their personality, you got to know the things that make them tick. You got to know the things they find funny. You got to know the music they like, their politics, whatever it might be, if they're religious. So I really focused on those aspects of his conversations with other people, sort of profiled him before I ever engaged or talked to him. 
And this helped me a lot by going and looking through all these resources and identifying uh, these conversations. I mean, the attack elements are what everybody read in the ransomware diaries, but th this part, the stuff that wasn't anything about that, was really uh, the, the resource that helped me to get to that end result. So after that, I stole all of his friends. So what I mean by that is he talked to a lot of people, but those people that he had those conversations that I just mentioned, those non-work related conversations, people he talked to a lot, those are the people that I wanted to spend my time talking to. So I did. Uh, this is Matt Vive, or as I used to know him, Boris, and as most of you guys know him, uh, Wazawaka. Uh, this was him getting married last year. Uh, this is one of his, his laptops that he uses to commit crimes. I guess it's kind of cool to have your name written on that. Uh, he's got me, some other researchers, and some other criminals written on there. Um, it, he was, he's an interesting guy. Um, uh, he, 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 you know, putting a researcher's name on an attack that you do crimes on, I mean, I don't know, that's just, that's just, what do you say to that? Thank you? <laughs> uh, but, but getting to become friends with these guys, you know, was important because as I was going to approach Lockbit, um, I needed to have sort of that validation from the people who were important to him. This is Buster. Uh, again, most of the world knows him as Buster Lord. Uh, wrote, a, wrote the Ransomware Diaries Volume 2 about him. Uh, he'll be upset that I posted this picture. He got indicted, kind of all knew who he was now. Uh, but he doesn't, he, he says it's not him. Of course it's not. The funny thing about this picture is, as you see, I asked him to sign the ransomware diaries, so he did. He signed it APT. What's so ironic about this is the very first time I ever talked to him uh, was through Tox, communi encrypted communication app, and I said, hey, Bastard Lord, you know, how's it going, man? Let's talk. And he said to me, call me Ivan. Fast forward two years, he's indicted. This motherfucker's real name's Ivan. <laughs> Can't make that shit up. <laughs> Can't make that up. Uh, but yeah, we became friends. I still like the guy. I, I mean, you know, I spend more time talking to criminals than I do corporate people. Maybe that's something about me, but I enjoy talking to, to, to hackers, criminals. I mean, that's kind of like the, the culture that, that I love. So this, this dude, you know, I do consider him to be a friend. Wish he chose a different life, but, you know, interesting guy. And then Mr. B, Bratwell, lots of people probably hate this guy, but he's always been respectful to me. Uh, sometimes he likes to, to, to be really sarcastic, poke fun. Um, but again, this is somebody who's close to Lockbit and spends a lot of time being close to Lockbit. So, you know, I wanted to be friends with him. Uh, I, I had a conversation, me, uh, Azim from Cisco Talos, uh, we were joking around with Bratva and uh, Wazawaka. And just to give you an idea of the, of the things that we talked about, you know, th they're not always a source. Some of the dumb things we talked about are so silly and fictitious. We we're talking about getting on a boat between, you know, on international waters between Russia and Poland. And I was going to bring a copy of my book, and Azim was going to bring some vodka, and, and Wazawaka was going to cook some food for us, and we were going to hang out. I mean, dumbass conversations just like you'd have with your regular friends. But these guys are regular people too. So when I say, like, I want to get close to their friends, that doesn't mean they're like sources or they're betraying anybody. It literally means you just became friends with them. Again, but important to the bigger picture of my real target, who was Lockbit. Okay, so after I did that, I needed to check out their place. This is data leak site, obviously, it's where victims are posted. But the important thing for this operation was the affiliate rules. And the reason that was important to me was because I wanted to join their gang. And I tried to do just that. Now, I knew I wasn't going to make it all the way through because, well, I'm not actually a ransomware criminal. Um, but I, I, I wanted to see what I could learn, and I figured, fuck it, why not? It sounded like fun at the time. So I went through the process, um, talked to Lockbit on talks. He asked me a bunch of technical questions. Now, this was my puppet, to be clear. Uh, asked me a bunch of technical questions. Uh, wanted to know who I knew, um, what ransomware groups I was affiliated with. And, you know, I had a puppet. I had, I had hijacked another account. I had somebody that people would vouch for. Um, but, but I hadn't committed enough crimes for, for his ransomware operations. So didn't get in. Uh, again, knew that. But something unexpected happened. You know, with Tox, you have to sort of approve the access in order to be able to have those conversations and be in that channel. Uh, after he did not let me into the group, he kept that open. He kept that line, of that line of communication open. So what I quickly realized was, this is great. I can talk to this dude every day now if, if, if he'll respond to me. Uh, so I, I did that, and, and, I, and I tried to have conversations with him. 
and I acted like I was an upcoming hacker who looked at him like a mentor and was asking questions to, to get better at what I did and pretended that I was trying to join these other groups and what he thought and how I should approach them and things like that. And he was really receptive to that sort of uh, uh, treatment of him being this idol and me looking, or my puppet, looking up to him. And that was pretty effective and, and a lot, that's where I got a lot of the intel that, that you see in the first volume of the Ransomware Diaries. But once I got through all, all of this, you know, the, the best part was because Lockbit was still talking to me, he let me play with his toys. And that was pretty fucking awesome because Lockbit 3.0 did not exist at the time. Uh, he shared some of this, he, he shared some of these pictures um, with me, shared some with VX Underground and a couple people. But this was like January, February 2022. This didn't come out uh, to be used in attacks until June of 2022. So getting to see this, it, it allowed me to compare it to the previous panel and identify what new capabilities we were going to see. Now this was significant. Everybody knows how this story ends. Lockbit made a lot of the attacks uh, that previously require technical expertise and hands-on keyboard. Uh, he made a lot of those automated. Seeing that that was coming, I knew attacks were going to be quicker, there was going to be a higher volume, and Lockbit was going to move up to, to the top uh, of the ranks as far as, you know, attack volume. Uh, and that's exactly what happened, happened starting in, in June of 2022. Um, but if I hadn't got in there and, and done all that bullshit and pretended to be someone else and, and been friends with him, I never would have got to see this. So that was very helpful uh, in this operation. And then everything has to come to an end. Uh, I wrote up everything that I found. Um, I exposed him publicly. And being the smart guy that I am, I put my name and face on my work. Um, you know, uh, made, made for an interesting week, I assure you. Um, you know, but when you do things like that, you know, you, you, you got to ask yourself, are these, these guys going to be pissed? Are they going to be upset? Uh, you know, either way, I knew those sock puppets that I spent all that time uh, crafting, I knew they were burnt. So. This was supposed to be the end of the story, um, but it wasn't. Uh, so I asked Azim uh, from Cisco Tallow, a researcher that I'm friends with, I asked him to ask Lockbit what he thought of my work. And uh, he did that. And Lockbit, you know, says, you know, of course I read it. I was hoping that there would be a photo of my yacht, girls, and marijuana. Now, now this is important. This is funny. The guy that I know is not the guy that, that we all see on these forums. The guy in the forums is like Tony Montana from Scarface. I think Lockbit saw these movies and just decided he needed to be this badass and portray himself that way. Because the guy I know, yeah, he loves money, but he's not flashy. You know, this is a guy who, you know, is more to himself, more about uh, gardening than, than yachts. Okay, so, um, so I found it funny the way he portrayed himself to other people. And then, of course, he called me Johnny, which nobody used to call me, but ever since he started doing it, it's become a, it's been the new cool. It seems that's now what all the criminals like to call me, so I guess there's worse things to be called. <laughs> um, but, you know, knowing what he thought of my work, that's still kind of a bullshit answer. I wanted to know what he thought about me. Well, I didn't have to wait very long. Uh, a, a few days later, he Lockbit updated his profile on one of those forums that I've mentioned that I was on. Now, you know, he, he went to my LinkedIn profile, he took my headshot, and I remember logging in and seeing this, and it, it was, it was a, it, it was a no shit, you know, asshole pucker moment, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it was like milliseconds, but it was like in slow motion, it was like, did I somehow do this? Like, how was this on here? And then it clicked, oh my god, this dude's using my face. Uh, I thought it was maybe a threat at first. It wasn't. Uh, what I've learned about the Russian hacking culture, it's very different than the U.S. hacking culture. It kind of reminds me, let me use this analogy, if you guys have seen like the Godfather movies back in the day, the Italian mob, they did bad things to each other, but there was sort of this, this respect and there were guidelines. They might kill you, but they're not going to kill your kid or your wife. You know, we got street gangs today, they'll kill women, children, it doesn't matter, you piss them off, they're going to come after you. Well, the Russian hacking culture is not like that. There is still a base level uh, of respect amongst one another and things they do. Lockbit looked at it like, hey, you got me, motherfucker. Good on you. Respect. And uh, I, I can appreciate that. Um, so that's what this was. Uh, so thankfully, it wasn't a, a threat like I had first thought. But it made for an interesting few days, let me tell you. And he kept this on there until the account got ba banned uh, this year. So it was there for a long time. 
So I figured if he likes me or respected my work, maybe we could, maybe we could still talk, you know? Maybe, maybe we could still hang out. Uh, so I said, hey, man, you know, I just wrote about you. Uh, you know who I am? Let's talk. And uh, I still thought he might tell me to fuck off because, you know, direct messages are very different than what you're, you know, how you tell people, you know, perceive people publicly. But I, I didn't know what to expect, but I sure as shit didn't expect him to tell me that he loved me and that I was the best researcher. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that made me laugh. And, um, you know, I, I'm actually not showing stuff like this to embarrass the dude. I'm showing this to you guys because he is a human being just like you and me. And I legitimately did like a version of him for a while anyway. Um, and you can't help that. You know, you do human engagement, you can't help how you feel about somebody. You may not like what they do. You've got a, a, an objective and a mission, you do that, but you can't help how you feel about it. But it was cool that the dude liked me back and seemed to respect me. I really didn't expect it to go the way, but, but this shit made me laugh when I read it. I was like, what the fuck, man? Uh, so going back to this, this, whole, this whole thing where I, I really wanted to like me and my, my wooing of Lockbit, um, you know, I, I asked him questions. Uh, I knew he wasn't going to tell me a lot, but I asked him about what he did before he was in Lockbit. And, and I'm just showing this part of the conversation because it's kind of interesting. You know, he told me that he basically always wanted to be a cyber criminal. Uh, so he started learning OPSEC long before he committed crimes. That way, when he became a criminal, he didn't have to worry about the FBI arresting him. Really hasn't worked out that well. Not arrested, but they clearly have gotten a lot closer to him. Um, but I thought this was interesting, especially now that I, I know more about him and his past. So the next thing I needed to do was I wanted to send him gifts. I mean, if we're going to go out and date, you know, I got I to I gotta send him some gifts. And uh, again, this picture, let me break this down for you guys because it may not seem like much, but from an, from an operational standpoint, this is in my office. I'm not blurring the background, I'm showing me. He knows my book is something I put a lot of work into that was important. Um, and this note's handwritten, I signed it, it's got the date. Um, before I took this picture, I asked him, I said, hey man, I just need your real world, na real world name and your home address. I'm gonna send you this awesome gift. And he, <laughs> I did, <laughs> and he laughed and uh, you know, he said to me, yeah, Johnny, I, I can't do that. If I do that, you're gonna get me arrested. Um, but I'm sharing that because this was very much a cat and mouse chase relationship, and he enjoyed this as much as I did. Um, there's a, I mean, I wrote over 400 pages of content about this dude in the past two years, amongst all the ransomware diaries volumes. Uh, every time something come out, he'd get pissed, but he'd always come back because he loved the game as much as I did. Uh, it, and I was obsessed with this motherfucker. I'm not gonna lie. Like this is where I spent every waking moment was doing this stuff. Like I really, really was obsessed. But back to this picture. There's the most important part of it that I want you guys to pay attention to is this seductive look in my eyes. That was not an accident. <laughs> okay. I sent him that picture and he responded, thank you for the photo. You're a very handsome man, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you look like Bruce Willis and Chuck Norris. I, I, I see Chuck, you know, the hair. I don't know about Bruce, but you guys tell me what you think. Uh, <laughs> it, it was cra this is a crazy experience I had with this dude. Man. I'll never have a story like this in the rest of my career, but th this, was, this was what happened. Uh, you know, we were cool with each other. We were joking, you know, this wasn't, uh, this wasn't a thing where he's like, oh, you're hot type of thing. I'm making that a joke, but we were just shooting the shit, you know? Um, we were just cool with each other. But, but all of those things built up to the output of all that information over the years that I've put out on Lockbit, and nobody's just ever gotten to, to see this stuff. Uh, so after that, we went on our first date. So Lockbit and I had the opportunity to go on this show Trafficked and uh, <laughs> got him to agree to it. And it took about six months to produce this show from where they started to when it was actually put on the air. And that was important because it gave us stuff to talk about and to bond that was not related to their criminal operation. If all I do is ask this dude about stuff with his criminal operation, this would have been a pretty short relationship. Um, and there's only so much content you can have outside of the crimes. So this gave us lots of stuff to talk to. Uh, we were both pretty upset. We spent all this time working with these, with these people and we actually got about two minutes on the show. Him too, not just me. 
Anyway, it gave us something to bitch about. But, but it was good because we really sort of formed this bond. And our relationship got strong and we were talking so much that you know, I couldn't go on vacation without bringing my, my, my second laptop to, to have conversations with this dude. Uh, and I can't be like, hey, it's, it's after 5 p.m., dude, or hey, it's a Saturday, I'm off, I'm not gonna talk because this is supposed to be a real relationship. Like, I'm supposed to really be his friend. So, again, and I'm not, when I say I was ups this was an obsession, I really mean this was an obsession for me. Like, I really got, uh, this was, I lived for this work. Like, I wanted this dude, I wanted to get this dude. Um, so, so it was, it took over my life, it took away time away from my family. Like, it was not healthy, but it's what I chose to do, um, and, and it, was, it was very effective, but it was very time-consuming. And I, I needed to take a step back from it, and things started to get awkward between us. And the reason it got awkward is, and it's not so much, this is just one example of many, but Lockbit on the forums is extremely confrontational and dramatic. Um, so, and this is just an example, he's talking to Batty, who's one of the leads for uh, what was Royal Ransomware at the time of this conversation. He was trying to get into their panel, he wanted to take their builder, Batty was pissed and was like, why, why are you trying to get my guys to give you access? Lockbit's accusing him of being in the FSB, you know, he's always getting into these heated arguments, but he's doing it, at least on this particular forum, with my face. So, you've got all these criminals, you've probably got the FSB out there looking at stuff, and somebody's gonna ask, who the fuck is this guy? Uh, <laughs> so, I, I, I needed things to take a step back, and I needed to find a way to do that gracefully and with style. So, I extorted the motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> uh, I actually did this. I, I knew, he knew me, I knew him, I knew he'd know I was fucking with him, or I thought he'd know I was fucking with him. So I made this post, uh, I made myself the bad guy, JohnBit3.0, I made him the victim, uh, and I put in there LockBit Ransomware Gang, being a pain in my ass since September 3rd, 2019, and told him if he didn't pay me $10 million, I was gonna release his secrets. Now, that was just the fucking report, the ransomware diaries called LockBit Secrets. Yes, there were secrets. They were like stuff he'd, he'd lied to his business partners about and problems in his operation that he didn't want people to know, but nobody was paying $10 million, it was a joke. But to make sure he, uh, he took me seriously, I posted this the next day, all right? <laughs> now, I went, to, I went to go talk to him about it to see what he would say when I didn't hear from him, uh, but something interesting happened. He went offline. I thought he blocked me. He didn't, nobody could access him. And it was both his accounts, his support account and his private account were offline. And then I started getting messages from his affiliates and from security researchers too, but the important, the, the important part of that is the affiliates um, saying, you know, he's been offline, uh, we're beginning to worry, we think he's in prison or dead. Are you part of this? <laughs> Look, guys, I, that's cool you think I'm like, you know, that effective, but I, I'm not kicking anybody's door in. I'm not jumping out of planes in Russia and pulling you out in the middle of the night, you know. <laughs> I was just fucking around. It was a post. I couldn't believe that people were believing this. Um, this is another one, uh, Bastard Lord, you know, you actually found a way to de anonymize everyone from Lockbit. Like, Guys, I wish I was a badass hacker to that level. Like, you know, I can fuck around a little bit, but damn, no, no, this was a joke. I wouldn't have used Twitter to do it if it was real. Uh, <laughs> but I found out why. Uh, I got this this DM uh, with this image, and it sh I cut off the top of this, but because it had the URL. Uh, but anyway, uh, it was to the admin page, and it said uh, it was the old URL. But anyway, it said, "Do we really have to?" And it was referencing the authentication uh, part of of the page for the panel. So obviously, it insinuates, "Okay, we bypassed it, and we got in." Now things were making sense. I threatened the dude. He, f at, he finds out somebody's really trying to hack him. He starts to believe maybe I actually did and thinks that I'm in his, in his, in his infrastructure fucking around. Uh, I found out pretty quickly what happened. Uh, thank you, Prodaft. Uh, <laughs> they actually did an op and uh, apparently they're the ones who hacked him. I was just there, good timing to, uh, to, to make that threat and, uh, and, and, and fit into that situation, but. It made for fun, it made for, that, that happened last summer and that made for a really fun DEF CON for me, trust me. Uh, so, after that, uh, Lockbit did come back about two weeks later, uh, you know, we hugged it out, we were good, but things were off still, all right? This is how I know things were off. I said sorry, um, told him I'm glad he wasn't dead, anything like that. He didn't send me a cat emoji. 
He always sent me cat emojis and stickers. This is a very passive aggressive way of him telling me that he's mad at me. Uh, <laughs> but, and our conversation started to dwindle and um, it didn't take long. He was having an emotional relationship with someone else. He was. Uh, I drove by his house one night, by his house I mean his, uh, his infrastructure, and this new bitch left their shit all over. The hairbrush was on the kitchen sink, okay? Their hair ties on the door. They wanted me to know they had been there. Uh, so the NCA had locked down Lockbit's infrastructure, um, put their shit up everywhere. So, you know, I was upset, and you know, I didn't like that. Uh, but then the, when, when you go to log into the panel, there's this new message and it's basically saying, hey, uh, we, we've got all of your, your chat logs, we know what victims you're responsible for, and we've got your wallets. Now, this is meant for criminals to see, and they did, and it was meant to play a psychological role, and it certainly did, but you guys gotta remember, they're also looking at my conversations. <laughs> they're looking at all the, all the conversations that I'm having, they're probably seeing my account in there and everything else, so um, that was a little bit like, oh boy, I might be in some trouble here. Uh, <laughs> but again, they were fucking with my man, so I was upset. Uh, but Lockbait wasn't going to go down uh, without swinging. I knew he wasn't going to rebrand. Uh, he stood a new, his, his new uh, infrastructure up, made, made the FBI his first victim. But when you click on it, he's got like this three-page long-ass letter that nobody wants to fucking read about what happened, basically saying he got fat and lazy and forgot to upgrade some stuff and they came in and it wouldn't happen again and that business would continue as usual. Um, but like I said, our relationship was now affected. And like all things, um, you know, y y y they do come to an end. And, and hitting pause on the jokes, like we really did have a relationship and it really did have ups and downs. I I'm just kind of adding some, s some theatrics to it to make it a, a fun talk. But, but we really did have this, this long term, this was like over two years, this long term relationship. Um, and I did actually get to like the guy a little bit. And then this happened, and this got me really, really upset. Uh, so Lockbit hit St. Anthony's Hospital, and I'm talking to him about it, and I truly believed that I could get him to give them the decryption key. And the reason I believed that is because, uh, you know, sick kids, which uh, it deals with, with kids with cancer, um, he did the right thing and, and gave the key back to them. Well, St. Anthony's Hospital has a large children's cancer ward. So I talked to him about it and I said, look man, uh, give them back the key, you've still got their data, if you're gonna extort them, you're gonna extort them, you know, you're greedy but you're not a monster, just do the right thing. And he wouldn't do it and kept telling me, you know, when he, he, when I saw the data, I'd understand. Well, unless you're gonna show me that they hired a bunch of kids to pretend they had cancer, I'm not gonna change my mind, I don't give a shit what they do with their money, like, th these are kids suffering. And uh, I started to realize, you know, I'd gotten too close to this, you know, this guy's a fucking cockroach. Anybody that fucks with kids, like, I mean, I, I guess I got too close because I, I didn't see it and I, I naively believed I'd get, I could get him to give the key back. Um, and I couldn't. And I sat there for, I was in my office and I sat there for a good hour and I typed this message up telling him to go fuck himself, telling him that I was coming for him. I think I even had the fucking taking quotes in there. Uh, <laughs> But if you do this type of work, there's some rules that you have to play by, and that's that you never let your emotions affect what you do. And the day that I do let that happen is the day that I need to go back to being a, a CTI, straight zeros and ones researcher. Um, so I didn't, I didn't click send on that. Instead, I, I just sent a thumbs up and, and I regrouped. But I was, I, I was legitimately, personally, like, affected by this. Like, it really, really bothered me. And, you know, making things worse, um, I know I kind of catfished him at the beginning with sock puppets, but you know, Lockbit had told me that you know he lived in New York. Sounds legitimate, right? Uh, he told me he owned two restaurants, and he told me he drove uh, a Ferrari. And now that me and the other man were talking, uh, apparently he didn't live in the United States. Uh, obviously, I knew he lives in Russia. I'm being facetious. But they said he didn't drive a Lamborghini and he drives a Mercedes. Now I was pissed. Do I look like I'm going to fuck around with some dude that's picking me up in a Mercedes? That shit better be, you better be rolling up in at least a quarter mil. I want a Bugatti something. I'm not fucking riding around with some dude in a Mercedes. Get the fuck out of here. That shit's a dime a dozen. So I was upset. I didn't like the and lied to. So now shit was was was, gonna, was up. You know, we, we, he had both me pissed, 
the law enforcement pissed, and, and I really did want to get him. Now that he fucked with kids, like, like before I was just fucking around, I wanted to get shit so I could write, you know, interesting stories. As I said, I love telling stories and I love writing, but now I was like, it was, it was personal. Like, I wanted to get this guy. Uh, so that shit was on, and I was reaching out to, to all my resources. Now remember, I built a vast network of, of relationships with criminals, with affiliates, and with security researchers. And I mean, I'm calling in favors, and I'm, I'm, I'm using myself, and I'm using also sock puppets all at the same time, and I'm trying to extract data and, and trying to do everything I can to figure out who this dude is. And Lockbin knew what I was doing at this point. He started hearing the rumors, you know, that I was asking all these questions. Um, and I often get tips from people. I'll be honest, before the ransomware diaries, there's probably like 10 of you who I was, uh, unless you were into nation state work. Um, but, but once the ransomware diaries kicked off, uh, you know, it was like being the hot new kid, like, uh, hot new, new, new girl at school. Like I was getting a lot of attention. So I get tips a lot, but often they're bullshit. So I wasn't exactly sure, but I got one saying that, Follow this email address, sitedev5 at index.ru, and you will find that person is the guy behind the Lockbit Sup persona. Um, so I started to look into it, but this guy owned two legitimate businesses. He owned a handful of websites. Every one of them were legitimate businesses. So I almost thought this was, 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 was bullshit and walked away. And then I saw this. Now most of you have seen this, but you gotta remember, this was before the indictment and all that other shit that's taken place in the in real world. This was before all of that. So I saw this and I remember that the uh, the NCA had said, you know, he drove a Mercedes. So when I saw this in combination with that tip, it was just enough to, for me to decide, okay, I need to dig in a little further. I almost walked away right here. And that, again, that would have been the end of the story if I had. Um, but I didn't, and it brought me to this guy, uh, Dmitry Horoshevev, if I'm saying that right. Uh, and I found these accounts, and they were all related to malicious things. Uh, ransomware, botnets, malware. And one of his accounts was even on the same forum where he now has my, or used to have my picture before he got banned. Um, so there are lots of similarities. Uh, so I, I wasn't sure I had the right guy, but I definitely was interested and was, was continuing to dig on him. So then it was a Sunday and uh, I got this alert. Most people watch TV, I watch Lockbit. Uh, I got this alert to his, that said that the site, the site was up. And remember, the site had been taken over by the NCA, he created a new one. And I got this alert saying it was online and I thought it was a false positive. I log in and I see it is online and it's populated with you know all this law enforcement propaganda. But I see this who is Lockbit sup and it's got a countdown timer. And I go check social media, like nobody else has said anything about this. And I'm like, can I really be the only person that's seen this? And apparently I was, because I posted it and people went nuts. Um, but this, this, this was pretty crazy because I'm, now I'm in this position where I'm like, fuck man, I gotta put this report together. I might have the right guy, I might not, but if they're gonna name him, you know, this is, this is my opportunity. Uh, but I had a problem. I had to get on a plane and fly to RSA, so, um, I couldn't take my research box with me. Um, I remember landing, going to my hotel room, and that next 24 hours, I didn't leave, I didn't eat, I didn't order food, I just sat and wrote. And I wrote 25 pages of content. Now, remember, I couldn't tell anybody in my company about this, okay? I didn't, couldn't take the chance that if I had the right guy, it getting leaked. Um, so I wrote it, and I sat quietly, and I waited. And the next morning, May 7th, they do the identity reveal and it's the same fucking dude. So I, I was like, there's no way that could be a coincidence. Um, the problem is they didn't release a lot of information about him. You know, there's an email address, some passport numbers and a picture, but there's not a lot of info about him. So I had to wait a little bit because nobody knew I had to get the web team. I'm like, you got to get this thing published. Like move, it has to be now. Uh, so an hour later, uh, my first, I helped and doxing the shit out of this motherfucker. I knew where he lived, I had his phone number. You know how hard it was for me to not call this guy? Uh, I had his phone number, I had his email addresses, I even had like the pictures of his apartment building before he rented it out. Um, his door, his pin code from his door, the beautiful Maltigo graph with all this information on him, social media accounts. You know, I, I knew uh, a lot about his family though I would never include that in any of this. But my point is is that, uh, I put all that shit out there and uh, the one part of the story I didn't share with you guys, I probably wouldn't have done this. 
The reason that I did this is what, what I found out when I was really digging into this at the end after the NCA came in, when I was trying to find out who he was, he caught wind of me asking all these questions to the affiliates um, and some affiliates told me that he was pissed and he was coming after me um, and that he wanted revenge against me. Um, if that hadn't happened, I probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have blown his shit up, but I wanted him to know if he knew where I lived, I knew where he did too. Game on, motherfucker. You know, I, I wanted to make sure everybody knew where he lived. Uh, he needs to be so busy, he doesn't have time to worry about me. So, anyway, the perfect ending to the story, however, uh, we couldn't end it here. I needed to say goodbye to him, so I did. I know he reads all my stuff, so I wanted him to know I had too much respect for him to let somebody else do this, and that's true. Uh, all these people that say, oh, well, he has horrible uh, OSINT practices. Uh, it was so easy for, to find him. This guy, you know, it's amateur hour. Okay, these are all people that say that after his name and address and everything else were released. It's really easy to work backwards and be like, oh yeah, it's easy to figure this guy out. Well, nobody was finding him before they put his name on an indictment. Um, I, I did, but, but what I'm saying is the general public hadn't. So I needed him to know it needed to be me. It was time to go. I needed to say my goodbyes. But before this could end, I had one final thing I needed to do. And that was to come to DEF CON and troll the shit out of that motherfucker. So that's happening today. And this is our memory reel. Dimitri, if you're out there watching this, the kids want to know when you're coming home, baby. I miss you. <laughs> These are my two favorite Dimitris, by the way. The, the other guy is Dimitri Smolotas uh, from Recorded Future. But, uh, this is, this is Lockbit, this is me, I've been having fun with this. Uh, I really appreciate you guys being patient with us. Um, if I have time for questions, I don't think that we do because we started late, you guys tell me, but if, if not, I'll be happy to hang around and answer them. Um, but thank you, it's my first DEF, DEF CON talk. It's always been a dream. Thanks for, for being here with me. <laughs> thank you.